Hey there, Power Platform Enthusiasts. Steph here. The floofs have abandoned me, so it's just going to be us. Welcome back to part three of my CapEx app series. In this video, we're going to dive into one of the most important pieces of this puzzle, the data structure. Now, when you're building a power app like this, the data structure is the foundation that keeps everything running smoothly, from the requests and approvals to attachments and the line item details. Today, I'll walk you through the SharePoint lists and libraries that we're using, how they connect, and why the setup makes the app scalable and efficient. And while I'm using SharePoint for this app, the principles apply if you're using Dataverse. So no matter your data source, this structure will help keep things organized and efficient. And if you're following along with this series, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss the next video in the series. We're going to break down how we use Power Automate to handle these step-by-step -step approvals. Now, by the end of this video, you'll understand how all these pieces fit together and how you can apply similar principles to your own apps. Let's get started. Here we are at the finished app. It's our capital expenditure authorization form. Now we capture the individual requests in one SharePoint list. And here you see all the details from there. We have a separate list for all the departments within the organization. And this is my dummy Sky Ranch Aviation Company, so it's all airplane related. But we have a departments list, so we have a one source of truth for the entire tenant. And then we have our expense details. And this is another list that has all of these as individual line items that tie back to the main request. We have an attachments document library, and I've done a video on this, so go back and look at that one. I'll put it down in the comments for you or in the description for you. And then we have a separate list to handle each of the individual stages of our approvals. And we have three stages here. We have a regional finance approver, we have accounting approvers, and we have the corporate finance approval stages. All three of those stages are captured separately in another list so that we can go back and reference them individually. And that's what we're gonna cover in the next video. I started to work on this video and realized we really need to explain and dig into how the data sources on the back end work. Okay, let's review everything and I'll show you how we created them. Now, here we are at the back end. And if we go to our tree view and we go to our data sources, these are all of our data sources. And if you need a refresher on how to add data, you click here. And I'm going to enter SharePoint. You could use Dataverse. Then you select your user and then it, you connect it to whatever site and whatever lists you're looking at adding. We're not going to do that now because we already have the app working. So if we look here, the Capital Expenditure Authorization Form, not a real good name for a list, but it's what I went with. And that is the one that's feeding here. And let me play the app, our new request form. So that data is going to go to this list here. This list consists of the title, obviously. We have people pickers, we have date fields, we have choice columns. We have pretty much everything that you could leverage in a list. Now I've had a request on how do you set up lists? Well, in the modern experience, like what you're seeing here, the GUI interface is amazing. You can click on the header, you can edit your columns here. If we go all the way to the end, we have the option to add column. And so you could add in here any of the options you wanted. So the GUI is great. The better, more powerful way of editing your list is if you go to the gear and go to list settings, this is really where you can do everything you want to do. And here you can just get a quick grab of all the different columns. Like I said, we have people pickers, dates, choices, single line of text, multiple lines of text, more choices, anything you can think of I have in this list. Now, the next thing that I want to touch on here is this drop down here. It says department. And if we look at our list, and I can never find things, so I always use Control F, and there's department. You see, department is a single line of text. But wait, you say the form is a drop down. Well, yes. Guess what we have here? We have a department codes SharePoint list. This has all the department codes as well as the department names for the entire organization one source of truth. Any organization should have something along these lines, either in Dataverse or SharePoint, that is one source of truth. You don't need 15 department lists floating around. Let's say Flight Operations changes its name, you only have to come in and change it in one place. So what we have here is I've added the list into the app, and you saw how I added lists. And then when I added the form, I deleted the 
text field. Like in here, you would see the text field. You delete it, and then you add a combo box. And this is a modern combo box, so you would come up here and add a combo box right there. And then you change your update statement to whatever you select in that combo box is what gets fed back into the list. And because we're going from a combo box into text, we just grab the text from the department. If I click down here, there we have all the items. Now a little bit of trick that you might have to do is what I've done here. And if you look at the code, we're sorting by columns. We're sorting by columns our data source department codes by the column department in a sort order descending or a sort order ascending. Now this will give us for the time of this submittal what the department's name was in single line of text in the back end. That was the use case here that they wanted. Could we have used a lookup column for this? Absolutely. But this wasn't what we wanted to do in this use case. Microsoft makes it so easy for us to do things in so many different ways. Now, if we click cancel and go back to the home screen, the next one of our data sources here is the expense details. So let's play the app and look at that one. Now, expense details for capital X authorization forms, generally speaking, are one to many. You have one main request, and then you could have multiple line items. And here I've used um, the Excel-like grid functionality to be able to empower our end users to treat this just like an Excel, but we control it. So much easier, it's one source of truth. So I can add new rows, I can add in the items, the individual line items, and at the bottom here you see we have a sum. I'm not going to get into this right now, it's going to be in a separate video, but let's look at how this ties back to our main request. So back to the data source. So we're going to start with our main item here, our main form. And if I go and click on one of these items and go to column settings, I'm going to show hide columns. And you see here, here's all of our items. The GUI is awesome. I can click and drag this ID field and bring it up to the top. And that's what I'm going to do. So here we have our IDs. Now I'm going to duplicate this because one of the buggy bugs is that if you go back to your Power App, and let's look at expense details, it will open it up in the very first tab. So if I hadn't have duplicated the tabs, it would have overwritten it. So let's look at flight simulator upgrade. It's line item 14 or ID 14. Now I have a separate list in the same site called expense details. And here we have the title that matches and I have a column in my vernacular. I always use master ID no spaces. And this is a number column. You can see there's a little number there. This, if I were to click here and filter, again, the GUI is awesome. And let's filter by 14. We have four line items. Let's go back to the app, go back into this one, four line items and a blank because I just added a new one. And here we have four line items and that blank row. We have description with his, which is text, amount local, amount US dollars because it's a global app, a global company, which are numbers. We have asset classes, which are choice columns. Let's look at that. Here we can look at all the different choice columns. And if I wanted to, I could color them because here under types, we have the different colors. Click on edit. Here we can do some formatting. We have quantity, which is a number and unit of measure, which is a choice column. So all of this, ties back into here. Now, if I unfilter, you can see how powerful this would be because we have all of our line items in here. We can leverage Power BI and do all sorts of reporting off of this. Okay, the next one that we need to look at, next tab over is attachments. Now I've done a whole nother video on that. I'll put the link to that in the description below, but this is just, and watch what happens with the tabs up here. If I don't create a duplicate, edit data, overrid it. Mm, just something you have to get used to dealing with. This is a library. You see we have the same master ID column. Let's filter by 14. We have one, two, three, four, five. Back to the app. One, two, three, four, five. If I scroll down, there we go. And you can check and click on each one of these. Now, a TLDR, if you don't want to go watch the other video, because these attachments are stored in a document library, Check this out. This is an Excel spreadsheet. You can see that from the name here. 
If I click on it, it'll open it. You saw how it opened in the same tab, but I can come in here and make changes. Let's say we want to delete this row, delete row 14. These changes are made in real time in our SharePoint library. So now if I came out of it and refresh, you'll see that I modified this Excel spreadsheet just a few seconds ago. This is why I use document libraries for attachments. If it was an attachment, it would go download it and then you would work on it on your PC and re-upload it. Not a good end user experience. The last data source that we have in this app are the approvals. Now let's look at the approvals here. Okay, so for every approval process, we're going to create a line item for that that ties back to the master record because approvals could kick off once, twice, we could have restarted an approval. I mean, all different sort of things could happen. We want to have a approval process distinct from another one if it should kick off. That way you have the history. So in this use case, and that's going to be the next video that we're going to cover is doing a three-stage approval process. The three stages here are regional, accounting, and corporate. And because what we're doing here is for regional finance approvers, this was assigned to Baron and Kate. Baron is the one that did the work, and this is the date. The accounting approvers were Natalia and Orion. Orion did the work, and here's the date. And then corporate finance was Rick and Rose. Rick did the work on this date. And then at each stage, we're able to capture the comments and who did what and when. If they don't provide comments, we capture that too. So if we look at our data source for this, we have all of that information stored in a SharePoint list. Now, if we have to cancel this one tied with a master ID right here, there's that 14 again. If we have to kick off and restart this for some reason, we'll have this for historical so we could pull it up and use Power BI to get some reporting off of it. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts, questions, and any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to share this tutorial with your fellow Power Apps enthusiasts. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep rocking Power Apps like a true pro. See you in the next video.